Not exactly the greatest day for a view, but rather fitting. This is my version of a Memorial Day show. As many of you know, most of my shows are a Memorial Day salute in one way or another, so today I'm taking liberties. Today's timeless episode is in memory of those that we loved and that for one reason or another lost their own personal battle with addiction. Not to make light, but I had my own struggle with addiction. I'm not afraid to say it now, but there was a time when when I would eat four Reese's peanut butter cups a day. I couldn't stop for a long time until I got help and beat that addiction. Switched over to Zaganut bars. Was eating two Zaganut bars a day for years until my teeth started falling out. Now, one Abba Zabba bar a day. I love you, Abba Zabba. Again, not to make light of, but if you know anything about life in the military, they love a laugh and could always use one, whether they are here or up above. So let's go. Young Ryan had rheumatic fever as a child, kept him in bed for six months, ruined his eyes, legally blind in one eye with poor depth perception and severe sensitivity to light in the others. They won't take you in the service with eyes like that. Not one scout took notice of this wild-throwing Wisconsin farm boy who at tryouts beamed his fellow student. They put him on second base. After graduation, he got a job, played ball on the weekends. Spotted by St. Louis Brown's scout in 1949, his, re his, score his scouting report said, Big guy, throws hard. Hitters can't see it coming, but he can't see them either. Ryan struggled eight years in the minors in those poorly lit ballparks. He couldn't always see his catcher signals. Was sent to an eye specialist who saddled him with tinted glasses, thick as Coke bottle bottoms. He was a big drinker who had his share of barroom incidences. Reinold, George, Duran, nickname, Ryan, pitcher, MLB debut, 1954. Known for his blazing 100-mile-an-hour fastball that he couldn't always control and was never sure where it was going to go when it took off, my dad got his autograph at the Orioles Spring Training, 1956. This would be Ryan's third spring training with the team, and his last. He was sent north to the Vancouver Mounties, where manager Lefty O'Doul taught Ryan how to pitch. His career took off. He was called up to the majors a four-time All-Star whose best years would be as a Yankee. He pitched three shutout innings in the 1959 All-Star game. He pitched in three games in the Yankees' victorious 1958 World Series, including his game winner when he struck out 14 batters in nine innings. He also pitched in the 1960 World Series for the Yankees when they lost to the Pirates. Ryan Dern would always keep his throwing arm wrapped in his warm-up jacket no matter how hot it was. And when Casey Stengel would call for him out of the bullpen, Ryan had a routine. He would hop the bullpen fence with one hand instead of using the gate. Then he would slowly walk out to the mound. His first warm-up pitch would be a hard, fast one, usually way over his catcher's head. His following warm-up pitches would be lower, but not slower. Until he finally found his catcher's mitt, or close enough. Once in warm-ups, his wild pitch hit the backstop with a loud bang, scaring everyone. He would sometimes do this on purpose to make batters think later on in his career. Another warm-up story said he hit a batter who was standing in the on-deck circle. Known to be a heavy drinker, and when his career started going down, he drank more. His two-week-old son dying only increased his alcohol use to the point where he checked himself into a hospital. Afterwards, he would spend time with a few teams. And while he was on the LA Angels, Ryan Dern set an American League record by striking out seven batters in a row. Traded to the Rowdy Reds in 1964, which was not a good fit for a recovering alcoholic. His drinking got worse after he retired. His wife divorced him. He couldn't hold a job. Ended up on Skid Row, then in a Texas nut house. When he got out, he tried suicide. It wasn't until the late 1960s that he was able to conquer his addiction. It took 22 months of treatment, but he stayed clean for the rest of his life and became a great addiction counselor to many. Ryan Dern said he never knew what it was like to pitch a sober inning. 
Now here's my two cents. Brought to you by The High Life. Not an ideal sponsor for today's show. He battled the bottle for years, usually losing, but he didn't give up. He persevered. Ryan Dern did not quit trying and was able to stop drinking. Many try to quit and fail, but in the long run, He's just another person who hurt his own career and family because of his inability to control his drinking. And instead of facing up to his problems, he chose to look down into a bottle. Not sure if this story has a happy ending or not. So I'll just leave you with this. A happy photo of my dad and my cousin Mike. My dad served and my cousin Mike's dad also served. So last but not least, to the armed and unarmed forces out there serving for their country, for our country, I salute you and thank you for your sacrifice and all that you do. Peace.